What is up, guys? Thank you, everybody, for joining in. We're going to get started in just two minutes. We always give a little bit of time for people to file on in. But yeah, crazy action in the market lately. Ordinals is always ripping and dipping. Uh, Waff and I are going to be talking all things Ordinals today. So hop on in, sit back, and get any questions top of mind ready for us at any point in time. You can throw those in the uh, voice hangout chat. Waff, how are you doing today? Doing well, boss. Yeah, what a, what a day, what what a week, right? I mean, talk about timing this show perfectly. We're we're set up for uh for some good times ahead. It absolutely love it. Uh really interested to see what your week was full of. Very curious if you've sold any Nat Cats or not. I saw the top seventh holder in the collection had 68, so a feeling that might be you and you might just be diamond handing, but definitely want to dive into it. Oh, I think I just got doxxed right there. I got doxxed. Not my intention, not my intention. That's not his wallet. That is someone, three traders in a trench coat pretending to be WAF. All good. Just, just, just kidding around. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a nice week. I mean, I can't wait to get into it. I guess we could wait for a couple more people to pop in before we start. Um, but just even with this pullback, man, we still, we still had higher points in, in the market than we were at last week at this time, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I've definitely seen since last week's episode just way more people on MBHQ talking about ordinals, and then same thing with Twitter. Um, obviously, never know a hundred percent with Twitter since your timelines got the algo, and the more you interact with the ordinals content, that's just kind of the more that you're going to see. But I've certainly been seeing a lot more people talking about it, participating in it, getting into collections. So we got a lot to cover. Um, I guess we can get started since we got a good amount of people hanging out here. Just tell me what your initial feelings are, Waf, going into this week. Um, obviously, we had a bit of a pullback, the first one in a while. I think we had about two weeks of just straight up only action. How were you feeling? Were you phased at all or were you just like, this is all part of the plan? Uh, personally, completely unfazed. Um, as long as the, the the overall trend is is bullish, I'm going to remain bullish until like that's invalidated. The, these type of pullbacks are always healthy for the market. I think uh, you know people trading on leverage probably got flushed out here, but you know we reset the R RSI on the Bitcoin chart, and I think we're gonna just gonna start continually climbing up, and then you know we're gonna bump up against that all time high probably a couple of times before we break through. So. I think it's kind of expected. Um, you, you don't you don't really ever like to see like a a minus ten k day or down ten k in one in one day in a matter of hours. But you know, in crypto, you kind of kind of always assume that you could lose twenty percent at any moment in, in time. I think. Yeah, that's a really good philosophy. Um, in in terms of anticipating for that possible pull down. You usually keep liquidity on hand always. I know you've been staking a lot in Merlin. Is it all staked up or do you have some ready for dip by moments like today? I mean, personally, today like doesn't change anything that I'm doing. Honestly, I'm not like buying anything more. I'm not like selling anything more. It, it's, it's just really sort of like business as usual for me. Gotcha. I might have been on the other hand of that coin. I think that I was looking for some dip buys today. I didn't quite have anything trigger. I was definitely looking to get an entry in puppets around that 0 0.17, 0 0.18 range. A few went. I just wasn't around then. And I was also looking to get low 0.3 range on Quantum Cats. Didn't really get there. Um, I'm not sure. I know if you're more of a diamond hander yourself, I think I tend to be a bit more of a flipper. Um, but I think with ordinals themselves, there's just a few collections that I have a ton of conviction and feel really good about buying some dips and then flipping them for more liquidity. Lately, I've also just been kind of taking some excess profits and throwing them into Merlin. I think that was the biggest takeaway I had from last week's episode was, man, I got to get into Merlin. So I very quickly joined your team, set up a few different uh, wallets and had them all join you and just started depositing some extra profit in there just to secure some gains, but also get that multiplier on top of it. Um, I know that was one of the touching points you wanted to bring up today is Merlin. Do you want to remind people who might be turning in for the first time, just kind of your stance on Merlin, why it's such a good opportunity? Um, I, if you recall last week, I said, if you're bullish on Merlin, you're still not bullish enough. And I still believe that to be the case. When we had this, when we had the show last week, Merlin was sitting at like a two point five uh, billion dollars in uh, total value locked, and as far as staking goes, and now they're in just one week, we're up to three point two billion. So, if that's not bullish, I, I don't know what is. I mean, that that's that's a, I don't think I've ever seen any chain with that kind of um, 
staking in advance, like not even blast. Um, this past week, I don't know how long it's been out. I found like this uh, calculator to like calculate your um, your potential Merlin tokens and potential value of them. I think that was um, gets me even more bullish because it seems like the uh, the type of token tokenomics and the drop could be you know a pretty substantial amount of uh, amount of an airdrop. So that that gets me bullish. Um, and then just sort of like the ov- overall meta where like it seems like everything on that Merlin chain is 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 going to be given to the users like this is airdrop after airdrop whether I don't know if any guy anybody got involved with this um, holding Voya in your wallet and you got this sailor drop granted it wasn't a lot but I just think we're going to see that mechanics over and over again so I want to maintain uh, liquidity on that chain and uh, um, on multiple wallets so that, that I could be eligible for pretty much um, any airdrop that com- that comes our way. Yeah, I definitely really like your multiple wallet strategy. I particularly like it through Unisat just because it's really nice to swap between all of them pretty seamlessly. Uh, and Merlin actually does a really good job of allowing you to just switch over there and see your balance. That was something I was playing around with a little bit this weekend. Um, and to your point, I looked over the Merlin documentation. They really do give a large portion of their uh, coin distribution just to people who are staking right now. I know that that snapshot happens sometime this month, and then the actual unlock happens in April. And just a shout out to people who are listening who might not you know, have funds bridged over to Bitcoin or on Unisat or Xverse. Um, you can actually bridge over ordinals themselves as well as USDC, ETH pretty much all of the major stable coins and just major cryptos, you can still bridge them over to Merlin, even though it's primarily going to be the Bitcoin L2. So I thought that was definitely interesting and definitely brings up a pretty good opportunity, Um, especially just given that the TVL is higher than Blast. I mean, that's absolutely crazy to think about. The other thing we didn't even touch upon upon last week was I'm not I'm not sure how familiar you are with um, BRC 420 tokens. But it seems like a, a whole lot of those, um, or I should say, ordinals or NFTs. They, there's a lot of them staked on uh, in the Maryland seal, and the supply is like completely like is gone on on, on layer one. So like, there's like this blue box that's about 0.6 BTC. I want to say about 80 to 90 percent of those are now staked. There's uh, the minerals. There's uh, a wand. It's, it's all like kind of like metaverse uh, and bitmap related. Um, just for like a quick TLDR on that. So a lot, a lot of these uh, assets are staked from uh, BRC 420s. Um, so it could be opportunity there for like, um, like I guess in hindsight, it was an opportunity there to like buy up those assets to one stake or two just to flip because of the um, the, the the shrinkage in the supply on layer one. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised we haven't seen more price action yet out of collections similar to bitmaps. Um, I think it's probably just a matter of time, just given that they are a pretty historic collection. And I know we've seen on other chains, their version of maps usually do pretty well. I know there's just an overwhelming number of supply. I think it's somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. But uh, I know you're pretty bullish on bitmaps, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Wav? I am. I am. And I think right now they're kind of a little bit forgotten. Um, the, it, it's, it's pulled back, I say quite, quite a lot. I think the last time I looked at it, they were like at p- between 0.003 and 0.004, I think. So like, that's a great price, man. And I think those are like a stable coin <laughs> and I think they have like room to go. Um, I, I do like it. People tend to like, uh, I guess dump those for liquidity. Right. But, um, I think that those are, those are a good buy right now, actually. Yeah. And I mean, do you want to provide for people who are listening, maybe a little TLDR as to your bullish stance on the bitmaps, maybe what some of their significance is for the chain? I mean, I think sort of like the general consensus is, is that like the metaverse is going to get built on on bitmaps and you don't really need like any other call it map or metaverse to build on. Um, There is like one one group that's already um, built out like the parcels. So each each bitmap has like parcels, I guess, within it. So I guess those represent the different um, transactions within the block. So some blocks are, you know, that have, have larger transactions, smaller, and you have some, you know, obviously you have some rare um, and epic and legendary uh, bitmaps. Um, there's like all kinds of historical significance to why a, why a bitmap is potentially... Um, I guess valuable, right? It could it could be something that's linked to a specific mint, 
or like a billion dollar transaction or or something like that. So there's always some type type of angle you could play as as far as uh, bitmaps go. Um, people are building up like games and like metaverses on the parcels too. So it's sort of like I, I'll call it like a city within within the um, the bitmap itself. So you basically have like an infinite layer of which developers could build on. I think is is what it comes down to ultimately. Yeah, they're a really interesting concept for a project. And I do really like how the actual blocks or the maps themselves, like the blocks within them, map to blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, I think that's just something that's going to be really important for buyers in the future. Obviously, 100,000 supply is like pretty large. But if you zoom out 10 years, uh, we might see a rotation back into that sort of meta land play that I think was pretty popular back like NFT world's era, and we've really rotated a far way away from it. But with the, you know, success of collections like NatCats popping off here and people seeing that stuff that's actually tied to being on chain and having data from the chain feed into it, I definitely think there would at some point should be a rotation into bitmaps. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good segue into NatCats. So wow, if we finally had it happen, I honestly wasn't expecting it to happen so soon. NatCats fully indexed on Magic Eden, including the artwork. Kind of a movie. Uh, they ripped up to like 0.13 immediately after being indexed on the chain. I think they fell down to about 0.07, and now they're chilling in the 0.11 range. I know you're a big holder there, um, but what did it feel like just watching all that action? Was there any nats that you collected in the time frame, uh, and just any thoughts on where we're at right now? You definitely been watching because like you were dead on with the uh, the low and the high there, and I think right now they're sitting at like 0.11. So I think last week when we were looking, we were at about 0.08. So we still we're still up like almost 40 percent for the week, even with the um, the pullback from the top. Um, the the price action has been, I think, pretty pretty good as far as um, maintaining its price for the distribution that's happening right now. Because I, I think when we first kind of got on to Magic Eden, we were we were at about 1,400 holders, and now we're probably approaching 2,500 holders. So. As far as uh, the distribution goes, I think it's looking pretty solid. It's, I still think it's uh, a good time to get in. I think the price is still relatively low compared to the the other ordinals that are up there that I have that I'm bullish on, like the the node monkeys of the world, the quantum cats, the puppets. So I think like Nat Cats kind of fits within those four. Call it in the top five right now, especially with that kind of volume, um, and it's probably the cheapest one out there. So it, I think it definitely plays. Um, to anyone that's like trying to get in um, with looking for some upside that th didn't quite happen yet. Because I, I do think like once the distribution is kind of like complete, then we're going to run up to probably like a 2x from here. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there, Waf. I, I'm honestly targeting about 0.2 for a floor when I would look to maybe offload a couple more. Um, but in the time being, I think it's been a really nice collection to sort of perform some flips on. Uh, I tried to offload a couple at the 0.14 range and was successful with that, you know, waiting on a dip here just to see because I, mean, I wasn't sure how low we were going to go today. But if we do get some dips, I definitely like just sort of keeping a stack of Nat cats on me, offloading some at the top and then buying the dips. That was kind of my go to play for puppets. If you like sort of the intra range action, you obviously do limit some of that upside. So there's a chance you, you know, sell in the 0.14 range and it just goes straight up to 0.3 and you don't have exposure to that. But I definitely like that uh, approach for trading ordinals in that price range where I can afford a few of them and sort of flip uh, throughout. But I think you brought up an interesting point with the Nat Cats, just that they are a good price range and have that multiple. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about this because I've seen some new people join the ordinals uh, group chat within the past week or so, and they are speculating a lot of these lower tiered collections, stuff that's maybe 0.01 to 0.02, maybe in the sub 0.01 range. I just kind of wanted to see what your thoughts were and approach to some of these ordinal collections that we're seeing, uh, and then I can share my thoughts as well. But do you believe that floor price is a good indicator for what collections you should or shouldn't get into, or are you more so just project dependent? Yeah, I think I'm project dependent. I think on on these on these the better collections, the call it the um, the blue chips or the soon to be blue chips. Um, if you're trading them, you you know it's probably a trader's paradise, right? Like the 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 price action is volatile enough where you could buy the lows and and sell the highs and you know wait for a low again. I mean, if you look at like just monkeys, 
or quantum cats like the range that, in which they traded in in the past week is, is is pretty much a wide range so if you're if you're a good trader i think i think you do well there on like these lower mints or these degen mints like I, I i like to get involved in them too these are the ones that i'm looking to trade mostly i guess like when the trade gets a little bit crowded uh you, you get wrecked right like i know some of us got wrecked on no dogs this week it is what it is um but I don't have the the conviction at the lower levels as I do with the with the other collections. Um, like this past week, we had those uh, puppet maxi bizes minting. I, so like those, I actually I do like, and I think they're they're probably at, at a point zero one five range right now. I, I think those are 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 a good pickup in 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 that price point. Yeah, I think you definitely nailed it with Traders Paradise, and I mean this is something where I'd really encourage people to not you know, FOMO into any collections as they're going higher. Uh, And if you are going to FOMO in, I would definitely make sure the bankroll supports it so that you can buy that dip as it comes. I mean, today alone, you know, I think Node Monkey's got as low as like 0.63 and they're already back to 0.75, 0.78, excuse me. So, I mean, that's already just uh, 0.15 Bitcoin you could have made if you were just paying attention and willing to buy the dip. And similarly, you know, puppets went down, I think, to 0.18. Now they're at like 0.22, 0.23. So there's definitely opportunities if you keep your eyes peeled. Um, I will give a counterpoint laugh just to give a different perspective on the puppet maxi business. I I almost aped into them, but was talked out of it. Um, I, I personally don't really have a lot of conviction in any derivatives of a collection. Um, I really haven't seen derivatives in general do too well. I do get that it's a sympathy play and there's probably uh, some buyer psychology that goes into that. Like it's probably easier for a collection to go from 0.02 to 0.04 than it is to go to 0.22 to 0.44 in the case of puppets and maybe their derivative counterpart. Um, That's something that I was definitely thinking of going in on and kind of faded a little bit, but I do like your conviction at a lower price. And I think that just goes to speak to the volatility we're seeing within ordinals. Um, Any collection can be a good one to trade as long as there's sustained volume. So while I don't personally think that there's a ton of upside in derivatives, I think you played it well to just kind of wait for that low range and then, you know, see that there is an upper range there that you can offload at. I mean, just about your point on node monkeys, like, the the point one five difference in price like that's nine thousand dollars it doesn't like when you, you think of point one five you don't think of that's nine thousand dollars but that's literally nine thousand dollars so you could you could make a lot of money trading these larger collections buying the lows and selling the highs yeah and I mean for people who are listening who don't have that liquidity yet like I started in ordinals maybe a month and a half ago and just was grinding puppets between the point oh four and point oh six range like. is still $600. So it really only takes a couple of flips to, um, you know, convert to a serious stack. And then once you get a serious stack, you can start taking some stabs at some other collections. Uh, One big dub I had over the weekend was I sold a puppet and then saw the bit glyphs were dipping a good bit. And they went from 0.255 to 0.15 just in the matter of like a couple hours. So picked one of those up on the dip. And I think I just made like a quick 0.04 off of it. Um, So I definitely would just recommend that if you're trying to get onboarded into ordinals rather than rushing in and just trying to buy any collection under the sun, because like we're at the point now where there are a lot of collections coming out. I think a few weeks ago, it was pretty slow paced. There was maybe like a degen mint here or there, but I'm seeing like five or six degen mints uh, a day. And I would say 95% of them are just pretty shit. So, you know, I I personally think you should just familiarize with something you have some conviction in and wait for those bottom ticks and and, and then just look for the quick flip if you're able to. Yeah. I mean, I guess all the signs were there that we were getting a little bit frothy, right? Like um, the the fear and greed index was like at like 80. The RSI was like at 90. All the degen mints were happening back to back to back. So it it, it does make sense that we pulled back and, and we're here. And I think, again, it's probably healthy sometimes you know you got you got to take a step back not get too euphoric if you're feeling that euphoria maybe um maybe just kind of counter trade yourself and same thing when you don't feel like buying maybe that's the time to buy so i I think those things the the psychological factors always come into play with the market yeah absolutely man and uh i do want to shout out lizard capital who's listening in right now uh he gave me some really good advice over the weekend because i think he does a really good job of just managing bankrolls and you know keeping his emotions in check. That's something that I don't always do the best job of, but 
I called him up because I wanted to buy uh, the golden ratio when it went up to about 0.4. And I kind of asked him, you know, where do you think this euphoria is going to stop? You think we go higher? Uh, and he said that, you know, I was asking the wrong question. It's not when the market's going to stop. It's really, are you comfortable buying in at this price point and having it go to zero? And I think that's just such good advice. Um, and, you know, I, I chimed in and spoke about this briefly during Jake and Bake the other day, but I think it's completely worth repeating. For anyone who's watching Ordinals, you're going to get some FOMO at some point because there's just so many collections that are running. And a lot of them are just getting to astronomical dollar amounts. Um, but even if something is running, you shouldn't just go in and ape your entire bankroll into it. I think there's definitely different tiers of collections that you can get into. Um, and just because other people are making money in MVHQ doesn't mean that you won't. Just give it some time and wait for the trades to come to you. Find a niche or a lane within ordinals that you really feel comfortable with. And I, I think that's where you're going to make the most profit is just kind of keeping your eyes on the prize for yourself and, and not trying to make a huge double up uh, in some expensive collections, especially as we continue along. You know, I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to see Bitcoin break its all time highs with conviction at some point. Uh, but then we're going to see like all bets are off how high we go. Um, unless you have any bets on how high we go, I'm curious to hear. Um, I guess like until we kind of like break the all time high, like with conviction and, and it's going to be hard to hard to say. I think as we play with it, we're going to mess around in this range, 60 to 69. But once, once we break it, like basically the sky's the limit and we could run for who knows up, up to up to six figures, potentially maybe higher. Um, that's where like you know the most of the gains are gonna come from, but like again, like I think that's where where there's more risk as well. You know, like you're buying in at, at those levels, um, and with this volatility in the market, you can again you could expect to to lose twenty percent at any given moment. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I definitely I definitely love that perspective of just knowing that there is that downside there, and definitely don't want to be a a jeet in this market. Um, so we talked about NAC hats. Are there any other collections that are on your radar that are either on the market right now and you're still looking for a good entry or want to buy more of or projects that have yet to come out that are really piquing your interest? I mean, I, I've yet to get a quantum cat. Like, so I am eyeing the, the price action on that right now. They're at like 0.4. So like in the past week, they've moved from 0.25 to 0.4. So I'm just gonna kind of sit back and and wait and see like the price action on that. Not that I expect it to to like significantly um, retrace or anything, but it's just sort of like something I'm monitoring. Like I just don't ape into everything, you know, at the moment that I want it. Um, puppets again, like I saw, like they've basically gone from 0.15 to 0.21 in the past week and hit a high of like 0.25. You know, I'll monitor puppets to see if if they go they dip below 0.2. Uh, node monkeys as well. Like, you know, we started last week with node, uh, node, node monkeys at uh, 0.5 and now they're like basically 0.75. So if they retrace a little bit, I'd be interested in trying to pick up a second one. As far as like upcoming uh, mints, like there's probably like three that I'm probably really, I want to say bullish on. Um, one is uh, inked on BTC. Um, the second one is probably the OMB orange eyes. And then the third one is uh, a DMT collection by King Pup Ape. So I, I don't know if he has a name for that collection, but he's been posting on Twitter about it. So those are like three like upcoming mints I'm eyeing. Um, I, how about you? You got any upcoming mints you're eyeing? Uh, definitely inked on Bitcoin as well. I was a little bit bearish at first, but you know JJ's in here and he talked to me about it and said he's close to the team. And I mean, you, you can't fade hype. You know, I think you can just see with some of this over the counter stuff that those whitelists are going for 2000 plus dollars. It definitely just goes to show you that their hype is there. Um, I'm really curious to see how those do over time. I know last week we talked about it, but there's not like a ton of projects in ordinals that have good artwork in a traditional sense. Um, you know, obviously love Nat cats, love the node monkeys. Ninjas are cool too. Um, but I think it's like ETH definitely still has some of the better artwork, um, even though a lot of people have been dumping out of ETH and coming into Ordinal. So I'm excited to see what happens when we get a collection like Inked, where there is a bit of that artistic flair to it, how well that will do. Uh, can it just catapult its way into the top five of collections overnight? 
uh, or will it get kind of rejected by the market? So if anything, it's just going to be really fun to watch that price action uh, and learn from it and see other projects follow suit. So I think I'm really excited for that one. And I'll echo what you said on Quantum Cats. I'm actively trying to get one. Uh, I saw today, and I'm sure some of you guys also saw, but one of the Quantum Cats mutated, as they do, uh, and got a golden cape attribute, which entitles the person with the golden cape to a taproot wizard uh, upon them being released. Who knows when that could be? Could be months, could be years, but they'll be able to get a taproot wizard with that. So I just thought that was really cool that that was a golden pass into the collection. Certainly going to keep my eyes peeled and keep some liquidity around just in case one happens to mutate randomly while I'm watching. Uh, but other than that, I think they're just a good hold long term if you're trying to get um, a taproot wizard in the future. I've heard speculation. Some people think you need one dead, one alive, and you can trade those in for a wizard. Not sure what's confirmed. I think a lot of it's just speculation up until this point. But I do think as taproots get closer, there's going to be a mad grab for some quantum cats. So that's something I certainly want exposure to uh, going down the stretch. You know, that's amazing. I didn't even hear about that. Like, that, that's so cool. Like, um that someone was able to snatch that and now, you know, they could get a taproot wizard. That's really cool. You know, ba you were talking about inked on Bitcoin uh, over the counter going crazy. What, what's, what's that price at right now? You know, I'm not sure. I heard someone today say it was as high as 4K. I don't know if that's accurate. I just saw it. I, I heard consensus was about 2K as of last night. Um, but I also do think that that's over the, not the whale exchange. I think that's Exaverse. So I know over there, there's some false sales that happen a lot just to kind of artificially inflate the price for sellers. Um, and it's not as locked in as whales. So I'm hearing 2K is consensus, but take that with a grain of salt since it could be a little bit higher or lower um, as it is all over the counter. And then that, ex that excludes like the mint price too. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that is just for whitelist access. But for, per JJ, the mint price is only 0 0.006. So pretty negligible. That's about $300. And obviously on uh, ordinals, that's not a ton. That's really interesting. Like just speaking of OTC, like, have you seen like the runestone price? Dude, I have, I actually got kind of slammed because I am a flipper. So at first, I think uh, Leonidas dropped the the tracker a while ago, and it said I was eligible. So I was like, sick. I sold a lot of uh, ordinals in that time frame, but did not qualify on any of my wallets for the snapshot because I just try to clear out my wallets as fast as I can. So I bought two over the counter last night. Um, definitely want to talk to you about Runestone. So the perfect segue, but yeah, they're going for about 12 to 1300 over the counter right now. Definitely wanted to get some exposure to that and we'll definitely be buying more uh, once they release officially. But what about you? you you've been tracking runes pretty closely? Yeah, you know, so I have like three wallets that are, that are eligible. And I want to say, I think these were trading at like 900 bucks OTC like last week. So that's another one that just bumped up in price by a lot. I think, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say I was like super bullish on it. I was kind of like in, in, in between and undecided on it now, but, but it looks like it's really picking up steam. I think Leonidas's runestone is going to do, do really, really well. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, I'm curious to see how it plays in because there is going to be an enormous supply. I think this is supposed to be the largest airdrop that's happened to on Bitcoin to date, largest being the most unique amount of wallets that qualify. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of whales out there who are going to have 40, 50 plus of these things. So the supply is over 100K, uh, which is going to, I think, at its evaluation just off the bat, be over $150 million market cap. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this collection does. But the hype for runes are real. Um, that's definitely something that I'm pretty bullish on. What are your thoughts, Waf? Have you been doing any research or deep digging into runes as we approach the happening? I mean, I've been holding my R6. I have some uh, rune guardians. I got airdropped like um, some other type of rune. I don't recall what it was because I have uh, the R6. So yeah, I am I am bullish on it. I, I think on these rune stones, like as, as a trader, so like in your case, I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to like um snatch up some of the ones that get dumped and and then i think ultimately they're gonna they're gonna rise the the market cap is high but i do think um probably deservedly so yeah for sure i think runes are going to be pretty huge for people who are listening in and you know are still learning about runes and getting familiar with the space 
Uh, runes you can pretty much put akin to coins on other chains. So these are going to be the first ones that are directly on the chain. Um, I'm not really sure how Casey worked through the deployment on this. Casey's the founder of Ordinals, but he basically made it at block 844,000 on Bitcoin. Once that happens, the halvening runes will be available. So some of these early collections that are coming out like Arsic, uh, as well as I think Rune Guardians and now the Leonidas runes, they're going to be passively mining rune stones for people. And then after that happening, you'll be able to exchange those for actual runes. So it's going to be a pretty interesting dynamic. I've seen some people fudding runes a little bit, saying it's going to cause the fees on the network to go crazy. That's honestly something I hadn't really thought about until recently. But it's really going to be interesting to see some of these coins pop off. And similar to how we have very successful shit coins on Solana and ETH, I'm sure we're going to have some very successful runestone projects. So definitely something to keep an eye out for because, you know, the, the multiples on those could go crazy. So like, um, do you remember when like Node Monkeys was first uh, kind of like deciding how they were going to mint? It was going to be free and then they changed it and there was like a lot of FUD. And um, ultimately, I mid curved Node Monkeys. And I think... I think runes are kind of like in that similar situation. Like, don't don't mid curve runes. Runes is gonna be like huge, so just 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 kind of play it bullish. Yeah, I would definitely recommend anyone listening play RuneScape for a few hours a day. It'll give you adequate coverage on Rune. And the the other OTC market I've been tracking obviously is Merlin. So last week when we spoke, Merlin was at a dollar eighty OTC on Wales market. It is now two eighty eight on Wales market which is insane. So you think like when they had this to token generation event coming, say like by the end of March, let's just say April 1st, um, we're, we're probably going to see about 460 million tokens uh, be produced as far as the, the, the TGE, with the rest being, I guess, locked or maybe available for like liquidity or some other things that they're doing. So at, 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 that, at that amount of tokens with that dollar price, we're looking at, at like a $1.3 billion market cap, I guess, not fully diluted. So, and, and we spoke about, we spoke about uh, Merlin last week where we think, well, I think it could easily be like a $10 million, $10 billion coin. So I think there's like significant room um, to run on the, on the Merlin tokens. Yeah, I, I think it makes a ton of sense. You know, I think uh, an interesting thought experiment I had is you take the TVL from Blast and then look at some of the top collections they had. And there wasn't a ton that was popping up, but when Blast went live, they didn't have their own official token launching with it. So I'm very curious if Blast were to launch a Blast token. They did have USDB, um, but it was more of a stable coin. Um, so I put it more akin to the Blur airdrop where, you know, Blur had the marketplace and then the coin went live. You're now talking about an L2 where we're going to see fast paced transacting. This is all given the assumption that it actually works and people can successfully trade Bitcoins on an L2. But in the world where it works and it goes off successfully, you have the token launching prior to the platform going live and then a place where people are going to be trading ordinals, which have been red hot and have had, uh, I think Magic Eden is the top marketplace right now for people trading NFTs. So, you know, a ton of that volume is going to be going over to Merlin. I think you're completely right. Like if they have their own token at launch, 1.5 billion seems low. I definitely think that's going to be a really interesting one to look at. Um, and we've seen that price action on a lot of these platform airdrops in the past. People sort of jeet off the bat where there's some selling for people who got a big airdrop and then it just rips up from there. So I really would not be surprised if that was the case for Merlin. It's definitely one that's, uh, you know, front in my mind. Like, I, I think it's going to be. A, a yeah, I agree, too. I think that's going to be a really good one. And I'm still looking forward to the other airdrops on 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 the chain. I, I know we kind of went back to Merlin. I didn't mean to, but uh, yeah, I like I do like the Maryland starter. I, I do like some of these uh, other airdrops that are coming for the for the Maryland chain, and uh, you know I can't wait to for April really because we'll be about a week away from the having at that point. Uh, we'll have this activated. Um, I, I think I think we'll be at the all, all time highs, but you know before the having gets here. Yeah, I agree. That's actually another thing I wanted to talk to you about. Any thoughts to sort of the reverse supply shock? that we're gonna see when Merlin unlocks. Cause something I didn't even think about is that there's all of these collections that are locked up in Merlin so people can't access them. 
They're going to be unlocking at once. I think I saw something that Goose and Oles, if you're familiar with that collection, it's pretty like lower tier, but it had it, it holds like a 0 0.01, 0 0.02 floor. 30% of their entire supply is locked up in Merlin right now. So I'm curious how many other collections are like that, given that you can stake puppets, um, you can stake bitmaps. So I'm wondering once it does unlock and all these collections go live at once, if we're going to see sort of a supply dump or if we're just going to be at such highs at that point that, you know, it's not really going to impact the market. Well, I think those BRC 420s have room to, room to the downside because like the percentage of, of those being staked are quite high, but then they're, they, they're also made for layer two, right? They, they're made for that like Merlin ecosystem. So that's one point. And then on the second, I was looking at like node monkeys. I, I think I saw about like a little bit under 10% are staked and um, the puppets are like less than 3% staked. So there's a lot of people not staking um, some of the, 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 I want to say the higher end collections, which actually makes me more bullish on them because that means like their their prices are not like artificially high. They're they're just high because like uh, you know because of like how attractive they are to people. But I could I could see a scenario where like like bitmaps is kind of like what happened to that price is kind of like counterintuitive to me, where like a lot of people stake their bitmaps, but the price went down, right? So like I guess you never know, but I, I, there there's probably is like some type of event where. If someone needs to get liquid, um, these things might sell like at a discount, even on the layer two itself. Like just remember, like when if you you're gonna get like a, a liquid um, token equivalent to what you staked on on the Merlin platform, and if you want to unstake, you need to have like that that token um, in your possession um, to unstake it. So like if you you LP with that liquid token, or you I don't know, you gamble with it and you lose it, then you're not going to be able to take out that asset that you staked in, right? It's like, for example, if you if you staked one Bitcoin and you receive like the equivalent of like a, a Merlin Bitcoin, call it MBTC, and you you lose like a portion of it, um, you're not going to be able to unstake your one Bitcoin, right? So, but then I I've heard people say like you might be able to play the arbitrage where someone needs liquidity and might be willing to be sell to sell like say um a merlin bitcoin for a little bit less than an actual bitcoin like so they if if they have like you know they want i don't know say they have one bit one merlin bitcoin maybe they're willing to sell it for 0.9 actual bitcoin um and then you could make that you could make that uh that arbitrage i think there's gonna be like opportunities like that um going forward where like people are not going to be liquid um and you, you're going to be able to buy their their assets like for a discount Oh man, dude, that's that's a trader's delight right there. You're getting me even more excited for just the whole landscape moving forward. And it just really goes to show you how many opportunities are around uh, every corner in this space. That's that's a really exciting thesis. I, I love that. It's gonna be exciting for sure. I mean, I, I can't I can't wait for all this stuff to go live. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good time. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Are there any collections going on right now that you're fading a little bit or you think you've seen some hype over and you're just not really getting it? No worries if not, but I'm always curious uh, just talking to other people if there's stuff where they're like, I just don't get this one for the life of me. I, I wouldn't say that I'm fading it for like that particular reason. I might just fade it because I think like it's out of my price range or or I think it's not um, doesn't have as much liquidity and can't can't like flip it as as quick as you, as I would like if in that event for example and, and even some of like the the higher end stuff for, for that matter like um like getting a shroom like that's awesome right but like those those things are highly illiquid so I, like I wouldn't like put my money into that because I just don't want to be that illiquid um so I think like once once you're talking about something that's like a bitcoin like now you're talking you know something that you know how many times does it really trade in a day right so if you buy something like that like expect to have to hold it for quite a while. Yeah, well said. That's a really good point. I mean, I, I've definitely been tempted for some of this stuff, but when you see these collections that have crazy high floors, they usually have supplies of under a thousand or maybe just right around a thousand. So it definitely, you know, goes to show you that you can take those positions if you want, but they're definitely gonna have to be more of swings. Um, it still really is crazy to think just how early we are on a timeline though. You know, ordinals is one year, maybe less than a year old at this point. Um, and, you know, just the historic nature of stuff. I know we've gone through this route before with ETH NFTs. This time feels a little bit different because it, it seems like Bitcoin's always been 
that chain that's going to have value, but before it was just going to be seen as an alternative to gold because of the finite supply. So the fact that we can now have these digital assets married to the chain, it really opens up a lot of doors to historical significance. I wanted to ask you today, um, Waf, if you've taken any looks at the sub 1K and the sub 10K collections on Magic Eden. I know last week, I think it was shortly after episode, there was a sale for about $1.4 million on inscription number two. And I immediately went over to Magic Eden. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make the trade yet or not, but it, it definitely seems like something to keep an eye on uh, those sub one and sub 10K inscriptions just you know over the course of the next couple of years to come. Yeah, I mean, just looking at like sub 1Ks now and the floor is like 0.69 Bitcoin. It's like a JSON file. I think these things are like a massive flex. And I think if you buy something like this, like you, you should be like, you should have a long term horizon in mind. Um, similar, like when the when like the, the the very wealthy buy like rare art to like, um, I guess, counter against like inflation uh, or like uh, the devaluing of the dollar, like they're not buying like a rare piece of art to to flip it and sell it like you know within 12 months like they're they're gonna probably sit on that thing for years and years maybe even decades and decades and i think that's kind of like how you got to approach some of these things here too like you know if you 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 make a bag like flipping and trading like doesn't mean like you're ready to buy one of these things and and, and like kind of because then because now you're going to be stuck and you're going to be illiquid but if you have like that horizon in mind like i'm holding this until the next having four years from now, then you know what? Then I think that that's like long term, um, that long term vision will definitely work out for you in the end. But if you're if you buy this and five months later you're like, oh, I'm 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 a liquid, I need to sell this. Like you might wind up selling it for a loss, you know. So I just so I personally like to stay away from this. I just think it's um a little bit too niche for me, for a little bit too niche, and um I'll I'll let like the real big dogs like uh you know play with this game. Dude, I love it. I consider you a big dog. You're the dog in boss dogs after all, but um, it absolutely makes sense. I think that's a really great shout to, to just stay liquid and trade it. Um, I mean, I guess I'm kind of surprised to hear from you after you weren't doing any buying or trading today. Uh, I'm just kind of curious if that's just like not your trading style. Um, you know, we've obviously only hosted this for two episodes, but definitely you seem so familiar with the lows and the high range of some of these collections. Are you ever tempted to just buy the dips or is that just not really how you roll? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, like, I guess, we, and, I, and I was meaning to like, maybe me and you one day, we need to have like a, like a off the show conversation. Cause like, we're, we're kind of getting to know each other on the show and, and, and I don't, I don't know you that well, but like, I pretty much for the last, I don't know how many years, like I have like auto recurring buys on specific crypto that I just have on like autopilot for, for the past decade almost. And, and, um, so like that, I don't change at all. I, 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 I shouldn't say I don't change it at all, but like during like dips, I might like increase my my auto buys, and then once we get to all time highs, I'll probably decrease them a bit. So like that kind of stays the same. Um, but as far as like making moves today on like ordinals, I just haven't. Um, if you want to talk about doginals, I know this is the ordinal show, but as far as doginals, because I'm into doginals too, I, I I did make some purchases there, and as far as DRC twenties, but I figured it wasn't exactly relevant. So so uh, that, but that's what I did today. That's what I bought. Dude, I appreciate it. And of course, it's totally relevant, man. It's a uh, boss dog's ordinal show, but little asterisks at the end there that at our discretion, we can talk about whatever's going on in the market. And uh, yeah, it's curious that you're over there in the Dojo's market. I tried that out, I think around the time Naruto posted that uh, field report just on how Doge is going to the moon. And it aged super well. I mean, Doge has been on a tear. I know it was down a lot today, but so is the entire market. Um, so I think great buy over there on your end there, just a uh, huge red candle in Doge. I think it's already coming back a decent bit, but my biggest thing is I just didn't think the marketplace was really sustainable. It was just so slow. I wasn't really sure if my transactions were going through or not. It, you know, took four or five, six times to try to buy stuff. So a lot of times when I go onto these other chains, I'm just discouraged when there's a lot of friction to buying not to saying that you can't make money over there, but I think that was one of the things that really sold me as a sticking point for ordinals is that even though the transactions take a while to confirm, Magic Eden does a really good job of bridging that gap and making it so that when you you know buy something, it's instantly pending and held for you. Stuff like that where the transaction's a little bit more seamless. I, I love that element of it, but all power to you for buying the Doge ship. That's dope. 
Yeah, I, I want to say like, yeah, if you use that DRC20 website, yeah, that that site's really no good. But if you use like Doggy Market, the the, the purchases kind of go through go through right away. So whether you're buying like a Dogenol or buying like a DRC20, like you you can buy sort of like similar to how Magic Eden is. Oh, no way. I might have to circle back and check it out. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and and not to go completely like off track, but like Swishy has like this a uh, couple of Telegram bots that that he created. One is to, like to track, I guess, like hot mints on uh, on the Doge chain, and also you, he has like a wallet tracker too. Those 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 tools are, are um, pretty cool, and um, you could catch something really early with with uh, his um, hot mint tracker. Shout out to Swishy, dude, an absolute beast. Jinzo told me that Magic Eden holding it for you is a myth and there are bots now and people are getting their transactions front ran. I think I did hear from, I think it was probably Seth in the chat who tried to buy something and it got front ran. Maybe it wasn't Seth. My bad, Seth. You're probably not getting front ran out there. But I remember someone said they placed a transaction uh, and then it got refunded to their account. So it definitely makes sense that as Ordinals ages as a space, we're going to see more of those advanced tactics coming out. Um, always just a shout to be safe and make sure what you're transacting, but that kind of sucks, Jinzo. I thought Magic Eden kind of had it on lock, so that's a little bit sad to hear. You can't always get lucky uh, with some of those things, but I guess just crank up your uh, sats if you think it's going to be a good one. You know, I saw a story today on that, actually. There was like a node monkey. I think it might have been like fat fingered or something, and then um, someone tried to front run it and paid like an extra 0.3 Bitcoin to get it front ran, and um, but the original buyer actually wound up winning it. Um, and then someone tweeted about it and said, like, we need some, like, you know, MEV protection, like similar to what we have on like Ethereum now on now on Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm definitely curious if we get tool platforms coming out on ordinals. I mean, I'm sure they're already out there, but I haven't seen too many over the counter. You know, I'm, I remember back in uh, East Times, there was definitely a lot of tools that kind of helped with that kind of suite from sniper bots to sweep bots, whatever. Um, so it'll really be interesting to see how the space evolves and, and especially with L2s coming out and things moving a lot more lightning fast. Um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of opportunities are there now and how that evolves over time. Yeah. With that being said, like always be diligent, like be careful with, um, what you sign and what you do, because like, you know, as the market moves up, the scams are going to come in like fast and furious. So just always be diligent. Yeah, to that regard, I have a funny story, which is that I, you know, I've been telling the entire world, hey, buy a Nat Cat. It's time to buy a Nat Cat. Um, so I helped my dad buy a Nat Cat. I basically bought one for him and I sent it over to him and told him, hey, all you got to do now is sell it and take your gains. Um, so he set up a Unisat wallet. And after he set it up, he emailed me his private, uh, his recovery phase. He sent me an email and said, here are the 12 words. And I was like, oh my God, like, please set up another wallet. Like, don't email me your 12 words because this can easily be hacked. He's like, can I set up Unisat on my phone? So <laughs> that was a funny anecdote I wanted to share with you. Please do be diligent in this space. Oh my God, that's, that's really funny. I, I think it'd be nice if we could get some kind of like, account abstraction on on bitcoin too like if we're gonna like get to a point where you know norm normies use this stuff and do these things that we're doing it's got it's got to be a lot more user friendly yeah i agree man i mean i remember my first night getting into ordinals it just took me a long time because i wasn't sure what the difference between taproot and native segwit and uh, all that other stuff was. I still don't know if I fully know the difference. I'm still going through the documentation. There's just a lot to understand with ordinals in terms of just understanding blockchain, understanding the blocks, um, and then you know all the other types of things that are nested inside of it. So I'm still trying to research and level up uh, in this field, but I think that's something that definitely will set apart the people in ordinals. I, I would definitely recommend if you haven't gotten into it yet, just start digging around. Um, the block runners have an amazing podcast. I know WAF has shouted them out before, but they're great. They just talk a lot about the underlying tech, a lot of the emergent themes, and then, you know, just some chat GBT and Google searches. You can really get a lot more familiar with the nitty gritty um, and just familiar, familiarize yourself with what's going on. Like mempool used to scare the shit out of me. I didn't even know what was going on when I looked at that site, but even just being able to navigate that and knowing, okay, how can I get my transaction in the next block? That That's like a huge edge you could have right now, I'd say. And, you know, as new people come in too, like they they they're trying to mint something, they're trying to do something, and then it's like I don't have any UTXOs. What is that? Like I feel like I've seen that so many times in our uh, Arnold's thread, like over the last couple of weeks. And it's like you think about that. It's like you can't transact because you didn't transact before. Like isn't that isn't that ridiculous? 
It's crazy, but I mean, don't get discouraged if you're out there and you don't know what these things are. Like it takes time in any space to familiarize yourself and learn more. Um, and you know, another perfect plug for MVHQ, that's what the the thread is for. You can ask people and hopefully they'll help you out, but never be shy to Google something. I mean, it's just such an amazing resource and same thing with chat GBT. Like it's way more hip to ordinals and, and stuff on the blockchain than you would think. We'll definitely answer your questions for you if you have any. Yeah. If you got some key follows on, on, on Twitter, on X too, like they, there's some amazing threads on, on there too. You can learn a lot from there too. Absolutely. Uh, so wow, we're coming up close to the hour here, um, always just flies by when we're talking about ordinals, but anything else that's top of mind for you this week, past week, um, just want to hear it all. Awesome. Like kind of just waiting for this rune stone. I think like that's going to be the next drop that could, that could probably happen like at any, any moment now, I think, right. Maybe when sats are low they'll drop that. So I'm just looking forward to that. Obviously I'm going to keep, keep, keep my eye on that cats and, um, look to see like what the price action is on there. Um, as well, as well as the other top projects and, um, you know, any, any D gen mint that comes along, I'm going to kind of like keep my, uh, nose to the ground and, uh, and, and see like, what's the sediment out there and should I mint or not? So like, that's kind of like what I'm looking at now. Um, we didn't have any questions this 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 week, like as many as last week. So I feel like if if people have got questions, man, feel free to to shoot them off. Yeah, great shout there, Waf. If anyone has questions, just tag Waf and I in either voice chat or uh, the Ordinals chat that we have set up, and we'll get to them on the show. It's definitely open forum for the community. I know it's Waf and I's name on the show. Uh, we're here to just chat ordinal. So if anyone wants to come in, it doesn't even have to be a question. If you want to pop up and say, hey, here's a project that I've been looking into. What are your guys' thoughts? We're we're happy to help you out there too as well. Um, while we're waiting for some of those questions to come in, WAF, something I did want to circle back to is just opportunities with buying the dips. Um, I put a field report out about a week ago just on the value of aesthetics. And I wanted to touch base on that because I think there's really good opportunities this week. Um, you know, I'm not really sure if this dip is going to get eaten or if it's going to dip a little bit further into the week. Um, we're going to definitely have to see how that plays out, but as stuff dips, definitely recommend looking for people who are breaking their rares on the floor. Um, one of the most sought after traits in puppets is the mog glasses. Those always charge a pretty good premium. And earlier today, someone bricked one for like 0.24. I think they raised the price shortly after like 0.28. But you've had some good opportunities to get some rare traits. And I think during dips is the perfect time if you're looking to buy those rare traits. You know, like once puppets run up again and they hit 0.25 or 0.3, you're going to see the rare traits are like 0.1 to 0.2 above the floor. Um, I think that's a really good time to be selling those kinds of things. So right now, I would just keep your eyes peeled. Um, familiarize yourself always during the collections as what's sought after. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw this, Waf. I think since last week's episode, Magic Eden added trait counts, finally. Been waiting on that feature for a long time. But you can now see, you know, what traits are small supply in a collection. So definitely use that to your advantage when you're trading, guys. Like, if you see some rare stuff get listed towards the floor, um, definitely take advantage of it if it's there. And definitely, you know, buy when other people are panicking. So that's something that's really been on my mind a lot today and want to make sure we touch base on it a little bit this episode. You know, I love that point because I I did notice a on the Nat Cats. I was looking at um, the catnip cigarettes. Someone someone dumped that for like point one one when the when the floor was like point point one zero, and I was like, oh, that that's a, that's a good one. Those are pretty rare. So it's good if you the collections that you're into. It's good to know like um, the traits and which ones are rare, so you can kind of identify those things quickly. Like I remember when. Um, when I was into Azuki's, like I was all about the trades. I, I'd stare at those Azuki ones for hours and hours, like looking at which ones I liked. And I, I think like if you do stuff like that on some of these things, like people are not really doing that. You could probably like identify something a lot quicker than other people if you're if you study it. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I mean, I've spent countless hours staring at puppets and not cats at this point. I definitely think if something got bricked, uh, I would be jumping at the opportunity to purchase some of them you just kind of have to act fast because they do go so quickly and to jinzo's point there's there's snipers out there who are going to try to front run you so definitely familiarizing yourself with those traits is pretty invaluable i will say in general though Laf, i don't know if you felt the same way but i it just seems like rares don't charge as high a premium as they did in eth um it definitely seems like when we had you know board apes and azukis and all that stuff going on people were just readily selling rare traits at different floors 
Um, it still happens, but I more so see that for like the top 1% traits. Obviously, with the node monkeys, the aliens are going for millions of dollars right now and the other ones aren't. Um, but even collections like puppets, like stuff like hoodies that in any other collection, you would see hoodies at triple or quadruple the floor. They're only going for like 0.05 above floor. So just curious if you've seen that too. Yeah, I agree with you. I was going to say, what about node monkeys? But you hit up on it. I think like, I think like they're the class of the ordinals right now. I think like they've made a distinction with their trading volume and like the big buys on the rares that like they're the number one collection. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, they're the first PFP on ordinals. I wasn't quite sure because there was a, a minute there where, you know, they were double puppets and, you know, it seemed like puppets might make a run for it, but they just ran down the stretch and I think they're just going to keep going. Um, I saw for the first time over the weekend that the founders have 500 monkeys each. I think that's crazy. Like, good for them. That's definitely uh, how to do it. I don't think any of them have sold any yet, but it's definitely a fun mechanic knowing that there's like a thousand of them reserved. Yeah, actually, th that was known when um, prior to the mint that they were going to reserve 1000 for the team. And then there was always speculation about like, well, how many of them are the team? So I get I guess it I guess it's two people. Yeah, and I mean, I I'm not even like mad about it. Obviously, I don't own any, so I can't be mad about it. But even if I was a holder, like the fact that they disclosed that prior to mint, I think that's totally fine. And, you know, I, I doubt they're going to just brick a thousand on the floor all at once. So Hopefully they figure out a way to do that over time uh, successfully and just slowly trickle out of the collection. But just thought that was a funny uh, dynamic that's out there. You usually don't hear about founders just being as transparent with it as they have been. Well, I guess until Pac-Man creates blur on 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 Bitcoin, then there's going to be like no way for them to do that, right? No, oh, dude. Yeah, good point. Blast is going on Bitcoin. And if you stake your points right now, you'll get a 10x on your points. <laughs> Or you just like dump into bids, right? Like you got you got you got you got a a book, an order book, and you could you could bid and you could you could dump them into bids. Like, uh, do you remember when OS, was it uh, OS, OSF did that with uh, his uh, board apes? Didn't he like dump like I don't know fifty apes all at once? Oh yeah, dude, I remember that. He just bricked the floor out of them. Yeah, so. That was, that was that was nuts. So if you so if we if we ever get like a blur mechanism in place on Bitcoin, then 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 watch out, I guess. Dude, that's a great point. That might be when the node monkey founders are like, all right, the bids are in place. Like, let's do this thing. But it'll definitely be cool to navigate. Uh, all right, I guess final thoughts, Wav. Um, what are your thoughts on ETH tanking this week? Ordinals, you know surging still obviously we got a pullback but you think this trend is going to stay through you think ordinals are just going to be the uh it girl from here on out and eth is going to slowly fade into oblivion or you think there's a chance for eth nfts to make a little comeback here uh eth, ETH nfts will definitely make a comeback but for now like the game is going to be played in in the ordinal space I, i'm seeing eth eth uh people moving in right now to play it but at some point you know there's gonna be a run on ETH. Like there's no, there's no question about that in my mind. Like when the FUD gets that big, these collect these OG collections, they they'll make their comeback. And right now, you could get a great price on a on a on a on a penguin or or an ape or you know an Azuki. So like those things still have like meaning to a lot of to a lot of people in the space. I think so. I, I'll, I'll see that that's gonna come back. But for now, people see like the game is being played in on on Bitcoin and the ordinal space. So I think. Um, I think they're just going to keep flowing here until until I guess like this gets exhausted and and the prices in in the ETH space like dip enough where it's like de definitely worthy to move over there and like buy the lows. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's all it's all what it's about. It's just uh, timing the rotation between the sectors and pretty momentous here right? at the top of the hour. Jinzo with two more Nat Cats in the collection. Jinzo, are you listening? Very nice, Jinzo. And then also also on this on this dip, right? Like this like this dip, right? It, this is the price we were at two days ago, right? So it's not really that much of a dip. No, it's definitely not. And I mean, it's it's hilarious that you say that because I mean, we really have been talking about them for a while now. But even a while has only been a couple of weeks. So it, it's so true that this dip is really just like still pretty high, all things considered, and it definitely could go lower. Um, Happy for you, Jinzo. Glad you got in on the cats and definitely glad that you got some more bullets in the chamber if it goes lower. That, that's awesome. Yeah, congrats, Jinzo. 
Yeah, again, on the Bitcoin price, like we're at 63, 375. I mean, like, how could, how could you be bearish at 63,000, right? Like, you just, there's just no way. Yeah, 100%. I mean, even like two weeks ago, what was it? In mid 50s, and it just ripped up to 60,000 plus. So if it does pull back further, it's just so funny that you see the shift of panic where people are like, oh my God, like it's tanking. It's like, it was here a week ago. You know, we're, we're chilling if you have conviction. And I think that's the biggest thing as you see a lot of these uh, normies, as we lovingly call them, enter into the space is that a lot of them just don't have good risk management or understand how to deploy capital on clips like i think jinzo absolutely has the method here where he's buying some but he's keeping some capital on deck to buy it if it goes further i've I've talked to a lot of friends in real life who aren't as familiar with crypto and they're just ready to like ape it all in at once and then it dips 20 percent. they're like oh shit like now i gotta get out that's so true like i i got and, and and this is like always a good indicator to me like top signal indicators is like when i get like um friends of mine that know like you know oh i'm like the bitcoin guy or whatever and they'll randomly text me in these moments when like bitcoin is ripping and like i got a text last night shiba question mark i'm like you know it's up like 200 percent in the last you know five days like why would you want to buy shiba right now and then sure enough we're down like 20 percent today dude sure enough yeah I, i'm tempted to read some of these texts from my dad today so funny <laughs> He goes, uh, looks like ETH on a run. Shift stuff there? <laughs> it's like, no. You know, everyone's a DJ at heart, right? Dude, absolutely. All right, Waf. It looks like we didn't get too many questions from the audience, although I did see Big Seth hopping in here. So, Seth, you got anything uh, top of mind you want to talk about, or should we wrap this one up? Go for it. I didn't realize you guys were doing something recorded. Sorry about that. Oh, dude, not at all. Hop on in if you uh, want to talk ordinals at all. Ooh, I wish I was paying more attention lately because I had some stuff listed that basically doubled in price after it sold. But oh shit, I got I got wins out of both. They were the uh, well the golden ratios. I sold those for point two, and then I looked at the right after uh, I checked my wallet. I went to Magic Eden. I'm like, oh, they're at almost 0.4 now. Beautiful. But it's all right. I sold them for a nice win as well, as it was. And yeah, it, that happened. Dude, and I swear I looked at it. I looked at them within a week before that, and they were pretty far under my listing price. So I was very confused. Like, what the hell happened? What kind of run that was? That's always bittersweet. Yeah, for sure. It's better than sitting there holding, thinking about selling for a loss. That that I that's so true. Like you know, even when you make profit, you always want more. You know. <laughs> I don't know what I said. That's one thing I love about Ordinals, man. The hidden folder of Ordinals are better than any any other chain. Yeah, you. I think it's pretty smart if you got your hands all over different blockchains, farming, playing shit coins on different you know different chains. If you're trying to do this blast stuff, just keep stuff listed. You know, when you list it, list it for what you want and don't cry when it sells. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. A lot of people will tend to like list at the floor when they want to dump something as opposed to like list it early and let it let it be out there for like a week or two or three weeks or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. I have like 10 different projects that, that were basically uh, shitters that, that moved out of nowhere, right? With this run up. And the thing is, people need to remember, we made the these thing where when Bitcoin was probably at 230K. So, sure, even if it was the same price, I'd be selling it and that'd be a huge profit, right? Not in Bitcoin, but at least in US dollar value. And um, now, actually, they're, they're pumping above what they were selling for or minted for. Or, you know, I, I mean, I'm not at a loss in a lot of these anymore. So, I've been listing everything, man. Hidden folder stuff has been being listed like crazy by me. Dude, what did we pay for Flora Forms? I know I got three of them. Was it like 0. 0.03 for all three? Or was it? 0. 0.003 for all three. Well, I think zero zero. And now they're at 0. 0.015. Yeah, like a five. Yeah. yeah. And they hit they hit at the bottom. I think it was three zeros and like a one or a two. They they really really tanked. They went to like to complete shit. And then I don't know. Then they just moved like into like a hundred x. Yeah. Pretty nice one. I, I've been hearing you, Jinzo, talking about um, all of these runs for ordinals. And every time I catch you saying that in chat, I go and check. 
what are what are these alpha pepes doing? What are these node frogs and node wizards and or devils and uh, my in, my inscriptions and and more often than not, uh, whatever you're talking about running is not what I'm holding. But it did work out on the um, golden ratios and these uh, floriforms. Um, I'm not sure how Pizza Ninjas are doing. 0.074, it's pretty good. Yeah, I should probably be more clear, but usually when I talk about those, it's because it's hidden folder trash that was like at was like maybe 5x below what you minted for, and I've been selling them at above mint now. So I usually check what I minted them for, and usually mints are very cheap on ordinals, especially those regen ones. And I've actually made profit on all those this week. Uh, node Wizards, Node Rocks, the things I thought I would never make money on. And I'm hoping I do the same with Node Dogs, because I minted way too many of those. Nice. Is this a rug or a scam? This keeper four eight one three. That's what I have from the Rune Guardians. Do you know about that? Oh, I have those. Those, those are actually you're gonna get Rune tokens by holding that that okay, ordinal. Okay. Yeah. So that they're not a scam. They they actually probably trade at like point. I want to say point zero, zero, one, zero, zero one, one, something like that. Yeah, sure. Point oh one two almost. I think they're a little bit more than that. I think they're point oh one now. So yeah. nice. I think it's like yeah. six hundred bucks. Yeah, they made a run. They made a run. They, yeah, drop, they, right? they went pretty low. They were, yeah, they would airdrop. Okay. I was like, yeah, I don't remember buying this thing. But I've also <laughs> never really been airdropped like a scam thing on Ordinal. So I was pretty sure on, on day one or day two, they were trading at 0.02 or something. They went really high. I should have done mine too, but whatever. It is what it is. They also have different boosts. So you might have like a different boost on the on the, the token generation event day. So like some of them have boosts for like 4 million extra tokens on that, on the having date or 5 million, 6 million, etc. cetera. Uh, nice. Having boost zero <laughs> on mine, <laughs> <laughs> but no good, good shout though. I'm sure those are all sucked up by now, but uh, yeah, I'll hold on to it. Um, see if it carries more value with the token than it does now, but still it's a good, it's a, Pretty awesome airdrop. 0.01 BTC is a big deal. So Seth, if you go to ordscan.com and you enter in your um, your wallet address, and then you go to the runes tab, you can see like how much um, of that token that you've accumulated already. The oh, rune oh. guardians. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I will check that out. So what do you you say you put your address in the search bar, your ordinal's address? I'm assuming. And then go to runes. Yeah, go to the runes tab. All right. Five, uh, just under five million. Four million nine 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 two hundred. And if you have any R sick, that it, it would appear there too. If if you're holding okay, any okay. of those. I am not. Those also made a run in the last couple of days. Like they were kind of at point zero eight, and I saw it this morning at like point one two, and then I know they have pulled back. Um, you know, with everything else, I think they're at like 0.10 right now. Nice. Yeah, it seems like they're pretty hyped to to get back into the um to get back into the runes. Definitely seems like they're going to make a run. So I'm curious as that leads up to the happening, how those will do. Uh, obviously, they're going to stop mining at the happening. So very curious to see, you know, what sort of that price mechanic looks like. But I definitely think rune hype is very slept on right now. So definitely. Do some research on runes, look into them, because there's going to be a lot of rune projects that come out mid-April. So you definitely want to be ready for it. Yeah, so they're at 0. 0.112 right now. So they're, they've actually gone up gone up um, compared to other projects, even with the dump. They, they, they're up. Yeah, and they're crushing. I'm, I'm up. I said? Sorry, I was going to say, and I do agree with you. I think like people are sleeping on it now because of like just how much these uh, or other ordinals have ripped, you know? Was this purely an ordinals discussion, or did you guys talk about the Merlin stuff at all? We should. Oh, we, we talked a lot of Merlin. What, what do you want to talk about, Seth? Oh no, I was just curious. Uh, I, I want to go back and listen listen to what you guys chatted about to see uh, see what I missed out on. I did figure out my problem that I was having for Merlin swap, though. If anybody else happens to have it, where you can't figure out how to bridge ETH or bridge BTC to the chain and you have to use that taproot address instead of any other address. So I couldn't do it on my main wallet for some reason. So I had to move it to a new wallet. And then once I transferred it to the chain, 
I could then move it back to my original wallet and stake from there. So I kind of found a workaround against uh, for something that was really bugging me. I mean, for for Merlin Swap, I actually just used my MetaMask, and but then for Merlin Seal, I used I used Uni Unisat. So I I was been using different wallets for these different things. I guess like whatever gave me less friction, I went with. Yeah, that's where I was having a problem. Is I was having tons of friction, and I was being stubborn about using two different BTC sources. So it took me like an extra day to figure out what I needed to get done. Awesome. Well, I think that's it on my end. Waf, you good to wrap this one? Yeah, I think it's uh, a, a time to wrap. <laughs> awesome. Well, appreciate it as always, man. Thank you so much for all of your insight on Merlin in the market and look forward to circling back next time for Boss Dogs. Yep. See you guys then. See you, everybody.